Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Multigo video. This is the video for our Multigo 4 release, which is something that we've been working passionately on for over a year. It's got an amazing new look and feel, and we've basically rewritten the code base to handle large data sets and handle them in an intelligent manner. It's genuinely going to change the way that you look at data. Let's check it out. show a lot more information on the graph. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open a class B graph and here this has got 65,000 nodes on it and there you go you can see that it's open. So the bottom here I can see the amount of entities and you can see that the graph is totally usable so I can zoom in and out. Uh, once you zoom in however you can also see that we've got a new visual element. So if I march here you'll see that these are blocks and these are actually collection nodes and we'll get to them in the next section. Uh, but using the graph I can zoom in and I can see that I started from a class B network, I went down to the subnetworks of that, and then I can see that there's a collection node, which is a list of, of entities. And if I zoom into it, I can actually see what's in there. And if I zoom slightly further, I can then start uh, using that element itself. So of course, because this is all in an index, the whole thing is a lot quicker and cleaner. So I've got 65,000 nodes, I could switch it to say circular view, or something like organic layout, um, and I can pivot between the different views on my data to get more intelligence from it. So collection nodes essentially are a grouping of entities that are similar. And they're similar based on their type and their relationship. So if you say, okay, well, from one net block here, there's 255 IP addresses coming out of it. They're all the same and there's no differences between any of them. We may as well store them as a list because we still want that information on our graph, but we don't want to have a clutter up what we're actually looking at. A nice example of this that I'm just going to open here is using something like Twitter. Uh, it's just three accounts that I've got. You can see them here. And then followers of all these accounts. So in this graph, it's really nice to say, okay, look, I've got thousands of nodes. We've got 4,000 nodes on this graph. And I can quickly see, okay, there's 23 nodes here in a collection that are shared by all three accounts. Uh, there's some on the outside that are shared by just one or these two that are shared by multiples. So it's really nice to be able to say, okay, I can take all this data and I can quickly and visually represent it in a way that I can see what's going on. Of course, within collections themselves, everything is as you would expect with a normal entity. Uh, so I can zoom in and I can see the individual collection or I could select it and actually I've selected everything within that particular collection. Um, I can also search a graph for them. So if I was looking for say something, I could say quick find, and I could say I'm interested in finding all entities that contain the word John, either within collections or within entities in the graph. So if I hit find here, you'll see it highlights and zooms into them nicely. And within my detail view, so I can see over here in the detail view, I'm just gonna make it slightly bigger. I can see that I've got all nodes selected that contain the word John. Of course, now that I've got that selected, I can also do a selection on that. So I can say, okay, I want to search within that. And I can search for something like, let's say Chris John Riley. I could type R and then I, and you'll see that it just isolates down to those particular entities. Then of course, if I want to look at where they are, I could just double click on one of them. So if I double click on this, it will zoom into that particular collection and show me where that entity is. If I'm interested in actually viewing the properties of that, easiest way to do that is to just hit this plus symbol next to it. So for example, I was interested in Chris John Riley, hit plus, and it shows you all the details that you would expect, right? So I can see what the output was, uh, what the details of the account are, um, and I can go from there. If I need to go back to my selection, all I do anywhere within this window is just hit right click, so the same way that the menu system works when running transforms, and then I can get back to this. If I'm interested in Chris John Riley, for example, I can double click on this, it will zoom to that particular collection and show me uh, where it is by flashing it. If I want to work on this entity, I can select it within the collection, of course, and run the transform. But if I want to pop it out of a selection, I can just hit the pin icon over here and that will pin it to the graph out of a selection, out of a collection. 
So if I press the pin icon, you can see that that entity is now moved next to the collection that was part of, and I can keep it on the graph. If I want to put it back in there, I just unpin it, and it will move back into that collection and it will lay out my graph again. So it's really nice to be able to say, okay, I can use collections in a way that I can visually represent a lot of data, but then I can also go into those and find the ones that I'm interested in. The major thing that we have changed in the way that you use graphs though, is that we've now simplified and improved both the layouting and the views. So previously you'd have to pick a view and then be able to pick the layout based on that and your whole viewport would change. So a lot of the time it was difficult to find where you were in a graph, what entities you're looking at, but now from anywhere within the tool, you can just say, I'd like to change the layout, for example, as you did previously. Maybe I want to pick it in organic. Maybe I'll keep it in hierarchical. And then from here, I can just change the view without it moving. So I can say, for example, show me based on diverse descent, a bubble view of that, uh, or incoming or outgoing links and so on. So it's really nice to be able to use it in that way to visualize the data. Additionally, we've added the new tabs. So we went over collections earlier, but we also have the import and export tab now. So it's a lot easier to be able to import and export configs, uh, import CSV files, or export the graph in various formats. Then we've also changed the way that the list view works. So we've done away with the whole view, but at any stage if you select multiple entities, within the detail view, you now have a configurable list of all the entities um, with the ability to sort them, say, by incoming and outgoing links, uh, if they've been pinned or what their bookmarks are. So it's a really nice way now to be able to get that list view out from anywhere within the tool. Multigo 4 is available right now via our website. So if you go there, you'll see that it's got a fantastic new look and feel, and you can get the tool there right now. There are two different versions. When you go to the download page, you'll see that there's an Excel version and a classic version. The classic version is capped at 10,000 nodes. So if you are using graphs with numbers higher than 10,000, you'll have to use the Excel version. We put a lot of effort into this release. It's definitely our greatest release and we really hope that you enjoy it. Mm -hmm.